Welcome. The service will begin soon. Join us so we will do prelude and get started on a beautiful Monday morning in Lebanon. Trinity Week service first week after Pentecost, 6 5 23, 11 a.m. Brilla is the miracle of bread. All right, thank you, Choir. That was very pretty. And he is the and it is the miracle of bread and that we share the cup here today. So here are the announcements for today. The next train trip is this Thursday, since eight be off to DC. A visit to the lounge and video recording will happen. Fenway eight cents, but there'll be a second with the BF. Lebanon Summerfest at seven eight on the green. Where they have dancing, a barbecue, and of course they end it with a beautiful fireworks display that they shoot off at the green. So far, so good with my significant other through the first 10 days. And camping later this month with him as well. So you will see videos about from outside, camping trips, and all sorts of things as we begin. As we continue on this new adventure with my significant other, and obviously it is working. And that is, on, and that is something that I will be talking about in the message. 
So we come before him again today. As now we are back into ordinary time. I also want to remind you that the Stations of the Cross will be presented in July. Actually, I'm going to do a little memorial for Wilbur, and you will see the construction of the cross and obviously his final resting place. But there'll be more information on that in the near future. Anything else? Well, we come before him again today on this Trinity Monday is a time where we can just put away our troubles. And as the prelude said, love one another and be together in God's living presence. So receive the call to worship. Welcome this day of, to a celebration of God's magnificent creation. Thanks, to be, thanks be to God, the creator who has loaned to us such a beautiful planet. Welcome this day to a recognition of God's redeeming love. Thanks to God, the redeemer who has given us God's only son as our example and teacher, our savior and redeemer. Welcome this day to the joy of God's Holy Spirit in the truth and power. Thanks to God, the sincere who walks with us each day, guiding and guarding our steps. Amen. And you please write and sing with me our opening hymn, Holy, 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 number three. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our sun shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glassy sea. Cherubim and seraphim fall down before thee, blue word and order evermore shall be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, Though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see, only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power and love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy words shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, 
God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Let's pray. Lord, we come before you this morning saying, Holy, 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 and you are the blessed Trinity. We gather here this morning, each of us, with many concerns in our hearts. Our hearts are concerned with systems of injustice, which strip people of their dignity and their very lives. Help us to be those who seek peace with justice, who would fight for those who are oppressed, offer voices for the voiceless and dignity for all humankind. As we will sing on the mercies of you, this day and every day, be with us this day and guide our step to a more just world in your name. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I will see you in the mercies, 161. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing, I will sing, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth. Will Make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. We'll say the, the mercies of the Lord forever i will say i will say i will say the, the mercies of the lord forever i will say of the mercies of the lord All right, very good. Please be seated. And the anthem this morning is So Be It.
Well, it is offertory time, and me and the, this is the time where you guys have opportunity to subscribe and to continue to check out some of those other videos as well. And as the anthem says, so be it. It is what it's going to be. And that is what we will be talking about in the message to, this morning. So the offertory today is Hear the Music by Ruth Shrub. And will the ushers please come forward as we receive the morning's gift and offering. So hear the music. Please rise. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise be all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Glory be to the Father. And to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Thank 
supposed to be going for like, I can remember an hour, right? Let's see. Lori, we hear the music. We know you are near. And so be it. It is what it's going to be. So take these gifts and multiply them and make yourself known throughout the world. As we continue our walk in the summer and this new relationship that was meant to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, the All right, so the reading today, there are a couple of readings, two of which you are probably very familiar with. The first is 2 Corinthians 13, 11 to 13, and then John 13. And we're going to look at love one another today. So. 2 Corinthians 13, 11 to 13. See if I can find the page. All right. 2 Corinthians 13. 11 to 13. We don't just put up with our own limitations. We celebrate them and then go on to celebrate every strength, every triumph of the truth in you. We pray hard that it will come together in your lives. I'm writing this to you now so that when I come, I won't have to say another word on the subject. The authority the master gave me is for putting it people together not tearing the taking them apart i want to get on with it and now have to spend time on reprimand excuse me i want to get on with it and not have to spend time on reprimands and that's about it friends be cheerful keep things in good repair keep your spirits up think in harmony be agreeable do all that and the god of love and peace will be with you for sure greet one another with a holy embrace all the brothers and sisters here say hello. And now the John 13. So this kind of goes back to Monday, Thursday, a couple of days before it actually. <sighs> okay. Just before the Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come to leave this world to go to the Father. Having loved his dear companions, he continued to love them right to the end. It was summertime. The devil by now had Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, firmly in his grip, all set for betrayal. Jesus knew that the Father had put him in complete charge of everything, that he came from God and was on his way back to God. So he got up from the supper table, set aside his robe, put it on an apron. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of the disciples, drying them in his apron. When he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, you wash my feet? Jesus answered, You don't understand now what I'm doing. But it'll be clear enough to you later. Peter persisted, You're not going to wash my feet, ever. Jesus said, If I don't wash you, you can't be part of what I'm doing. Peter persisted, excuse me, Master, said Peter, now that my feet bend, wash my hands, wash my head. Jesus said, if you've had a bath in the morning, you only need your feet washed now, and you're clean from head to toe. My concern you understand is holiness, not hygiene. So now you're clean, but not every one of you. He knew who was betraying him, that's why he said not every one of you. After he finished washing their feet, took his robe, put it back on, and went back to his place at the table. Then he said, do you understand what I've done to you? You address me as teacher and master and rightly so. That is what I am. So if I, the master and teacher, wash your feet, you must now wash each other's feet. I believe I have a pattern for you. What I've done, you do. I'm only pointing out the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, 
act like it, and live a blessed life. I've not included all of you in this. I know precisely whom I've selected so as not to interfere in the fulfillment of this scripture, but one who ate bread at my table will stab me in the back. I'm telling you all this ahead of time so that when it happens, you believe that I am who I say it. Make sure you get this right. Receiving someone I sent is the same as receiving me, just as receiving me is the same as receiving as the one who sent me. After, say, after he said these things, Jesus became visibly upset. And then he told him why. One of you is going to betray me. The disciples looked around one another, wondering who on earth he was talking about. One of the disciples, the one Jesus loved dearly, was reclining against him, his head on his shoulder. Peter motioned him to ask who Jesus might be talking about. So being the closest, he said, Master, who? Jesus said, the one to whom I give this crust of bread after I dipped it. Then he dipped the crust and gave it to Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot. As soon as the bread was in his hand, Satan entered him. What you must do, said Jesus, do it and get it over with. No one around the supper table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that since Judas was their treasurer, Jesus was telling them to buy what they needed for the feast, or that he should give something to the poor. Judas, with a piece of bread, left. It was night. When he left, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has seen for who he is, and God seen for who he is in him. The moment God has seen him, God's glory will be on display, and glorifying him, he himself is glorified, glory all around. Children, I'm with you for only a short time longer. You're going to look high and low for me, but just as I told the Jews, I am telling you, where I go, you are not able to come. Let me give you a new command. Love one another in the same way I loved you. You love one another. This is how everyone will recognize that you are my disciples when they see the love you have for each other. Simon Peter asked, Master, just where are you going? Jesus answered, You can't now follow me where I'm going. You will follow later. Master, said Peter, Why can't I follow now? I'll lay down my life for you. Ha! <laughs> really? You'll lay down your life for me? He said sarcastically. The truth is that before the rooster crows, you'll deny me. Three times. Here runs the reading of God of the Blessed to the reading of these holy words. So, love one another as he has loved us. We we've talked about this before, and it actually is something that I was thinking about over the weekend. Now, in any new relationship, you have your ups and downs. You know, you're getting used to being around each other and things like that. But there are appropriate ways to handle situations that come up. Without going completely crazy. One thing that I've noticed here is sometimes people live in fear. Like, we can't predict the future. We don't know what's going to happen day in and day out because that's unrealistic, guys. We have to live in the moment enjoy each other's company love one another and the love that i have for my significant other and the love he has for me is so strong everybody's going to get into their disagreements everybody's going to have their tips but there are ways to work through those situations. So that way you have a common ground that doesn't get to the out of control phase and them telling you, you know, that we should be just friends and so on and so forth. Because remember, if they wanted to be just friends with you, then you wouldn't see them as often as one does when they have a significant other. But Jesus is telling us to love one another as he has loved us. Washing their feet, telling them what's going to happen.
You know, there's an anthem called A Love and Heart. And I'm going to play that for you now. Excuse me. Just listen to the words, guys. <coughs> what a pretty anthem. Thank you, Timothy Bashan. And it is right. To live in faith is to be in God's pure light. Live in the moment and not letting the little things get to you. There actually was a situation yesterday that could have been handled in five minutes. So we were going to go shopping and so on. But I took, but I went the wrong way and didn't say anything wrong. And then he got all worked up and, you know, then that was the end of it. You see, yesterday was, was 
a very bad day for everybody. I don't know if it was the weather. I don't know if it because we did not get enough sleep the night before or whatever was going on in our minds. It just turned out to be a very unpleasant Sunday. And the, and the drama just continued and continued. You know, when your significant other says that they want to be just friends or they ask you, you know, block you and whatnot, they're not going to. They say these, they will say those things out of anger to get you worked up. But if we remain, but if we remain calm and we assure them, that you know what everything will be fine you know like everything is fine there's nothing to worry about it was a mistake and so on and promising them that, that you won't do that again because is it worth losing the relationship over something simple over something that really could have been handled in five minutes by simply asking him, hey, do you want to go to work? There's a Target and there's the Rugas and things like that. Do you want to go to work today? Or do you want to go when this is when this is going to happen? It's communicate, people. Because what happens is we naturally feel that we are not loved. We feel that, you know what, this is just how the world is and we go hide in our room all day. Because we don't want to deal with the outside world. And you sit here and you just and you and you just hoping and waiting that they will reach out and say, you know, hey, I'm sorry. It is a process, especially in a new relationship, and certainly it's kind of it is scary when you're when you're madly in love with somebody with two people that are meant to be together. See, there's nothing more beautiful than showing the love of Christ through a relationship to love one another, to be happy, to share the joy. And the trinity of being in love. Love is not just sex. It's physical love, ment no. physical love, mental love, and emotional love. So, with an emotional attachment to each other. And he says, I'm practically perfect. Right. But when they get into that state, it's it's a good idea to just say it once and then leave it. Say it once and move on to the next topic. Because a lot of times, some things they just built up they just build up in their minds. It's like yesterday I was telling the story of what led me to him. You know, talking about how things happened in twenty twenty two and obviously losing Wilbur and things like that. Well that well that set him off. But this so I just laid there and thought and just thought I don't know what to think or feel at the moment. And I had stepped and I had backed off because it felt like the right thing to do at the time. But we talked about, but he, he said, no, he said, I didn't mean anything of what I said. We're, we're fine. It's going to keep rolling. See, this is knowing who you are and knowing your worth, people, because we all made mistakes. We're all going to, you know, I'm sure that has happened with a lot of people. 
you know, just make a wrong turn and then, and then realize, it like, oh, be like, wait a second, we were going to Manchester, not Warwick. Things happen, guys. Things happen. It's how we deal with the situation properly. Everybody's going to get worked up. Everybody's going to have their moments. But it's how we handle those moments appropriately, which will lead into the love of one another as he has loved us. John 13 is very similar to Luke 23 and the other stories that come after Palm Sunday lead into Holy Week. So this is a new command to love one another as he has loved us. This is overcoming fears again, overcoming our shortcomings, and not reliving the past. You know, I was telling them, I, I haven't even thought about those people from the past. haven't thought about I'm sure they're all living fruitful lives but to love one another is a symbol of the cross the cross remember one of the things that it represents is love I was just reading an article uh, what somebody wrote about the cross. They were saying that it's the irony of God's will. It is. Because the cross appears in every everything in life. But to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, who is alive, risen from the dead, it has ascended to the Father and the Blessed Trinity, the three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And it is through God's love that has led the two of us to be together. Two people that are really meant for each other. Two people that are the best thing since sliced bread. Two people that have a lot to offer, who are, who are good people. This is what love one another is about. We talk about it all the time. Sometimes in the world, there's the opposite. But here, there's a lot of love to be had. And I guarantee you, more of it is on the way. Because we are two people that are meant for each other. And by the love of God, we... We have peace with each other. As it says in that picture, finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice, strive for full restoration, encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. That is true. So encourage one another. One mind, live in peace. There is another anthem that I wanted to play for you while we were here. And that was the one you may have heard a couple of weeks ago called He Loved Them to the End. Oops. Thank you. 
We come to the place of prayer, and it is a time where we can lift each other up both in good times and bad times. We obviously want to continue to pray that this relationship continues to grow and flourish. We pray for a new Wilbur, and we're just going to see what the summer brings to us. And the first one is 641, Hear My Prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Hear our prayer, O Lord. Incline to us and grant us thy peace. Lord, the second day we come before you, knowing that you have a lot of love to give each and every one of us, from the youngest of us to the oldest, we are your sons and daughters. And in this world that we live in, sometimes things happen that are beyond our own control. Thank 
Sorry, guys. Sometimes in this world, things happen that are beyond our own control and beliefs. Why is there so much violence in the world? The world can be a scary place. But with you, you turn down our fears and everything comes together. Like this relationship with Ricky has been well deserved. And through these first 10 days, there's been a lot of love to be had with one another. So the love of one another comes into play here when you wash their feet and share in the bread and the cup, which we we're about to do in a moment. So Lord, be with each and every one of us this day and every day as we give the viewers at home a time to lift some people up that they may know. And so to this end, you love each and every one of us, and you gave your life for us. You loved us to the end, and you love us even now. And so it is in that prayer that you taught us, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as earth it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. With eyes the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Come share the Lord, 2269. Gather here in Jesus' name. His love is burning in our hearts like living flame. For through the love and Son, the Father makes us one. Come take the bread, come drink the cup, come share the Lord. One is a stranger here, everyone belongs. With our forgiveness here, we in turn forgive all wrongs. Thus here he breaks the bread. The Lord who pours the cup is risen from the dead. The one we love the most is now our gracious host. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. We are now a family of rich for the Lord is head. The Lord meets us here in the breaking of the bread. Oh, gather soon, where angels sing. We'll see the glory of our Lord and coming King. 
And we anticipate the feast for which we wait. Come take the bread, come drink the wine, come share the Lord. Communion anthem is given for you. So on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup, and after blessing it, he said, In this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. So as often as we eat of the bread and we drink from the cup, we remind that he is the living Christ who is alive even now in 2023 and has shown us to love one another as he has loved us. Let's pray. Lord, your table is a wonderful reminder of what you did for us. It shows us to love one another as you have given yourself for us. 
So as we leave this sacred place today, may we continue to remember what this table means and the wonderful love you have for us and the love that we have for each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Close with him is trust and obey. Five seventy one. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. What we do is good will. He abides with us still, and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Not a burden we bear. Not a sorrow we share, but our toil he does richly repay. Not a grief nor a loss, not a frown nor a cross. It is blessed if we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. We never can prove the delights of his love until on the altar we lay for the favor he, he showed. For the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says, he says we will do. Where he says we will go, never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. Be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Receive the bad answer. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he teach you to love one another and to trust and obey this day and every day. In Jesus' name, amen.